So for a while, man, you know, me and you've been talking and you've been telling me that um, Tupac wasn't really signed to death row like everybody thinks he was. So with that being said, man, I want you, if you don't mind, man, just explain to my followers or whatever why you think Tupac wasn't really signed to death row. Well, it's, it's not what I think. It's actually what I know for a fact. And like yeah, I said, okay. if people did their uh, due diligence, a lot of people want to believe what they want to believe, I guess, because of the folklore of, of death row and people that weren't really around at that particular time. Um, but when, when Tupac was in jail, he was in a desperate situation. And, um, and like I said, um, he was signed with Interscope, if you remember. So when they went to get uh, Tupac out of jail, um, if you look at that, uh, it wasn't a contract that he signed. Uh, that was like a, a, a deal memorandum, if you will. And it was deal points as to what would be included in a contract had he signed with death row and they actually wrote up a contract and that was supposed to be in it and that was the language in the agreement. But the first thing that he had signed was, it was a letter to Interscope, basically explaining that David Kenner and Suge Knight would be uh, respectively Tupac's lawyer, uh, David Kenner and Suge Knight would be his manager, letting Interscope know this, right? Now, at that time, Tupac signed the Interscope. So first and foremost, you would need to uh, void out the Interscope contract in order for Tupac to sign with Death Row. And so when you see and look at that contract, that's not what happened. So basically, it was a tentative agreement on what Death Row and Shield Knight was supposed to do. But first and foremost, it was ripe with a, a conflict of interest. And the conflict of interest is this. David Kenner was Suge Knight's lawyer, and David Kenner was also the lawyer for Death Row. And then he would now be acting as the lawyer for Tupac. So if there were anything to go on, how would anybody's rights, uh, mainly Tupac's rights, be protected? They couldn't be. There was a conflict of interest. Who are you going to look out for? The label and the CEO? Or are you going to look out for the artist? And so that in itself should let people know that Tupac really wasn't signed to death row because under the uh, legal ethics, David Kenner couldn't represent Tupac or be his lawyer. You know, ethically, he couldn't do that, but it happened anyway. And so when Tupac um, gets out of jail, um, he gets out of jail. They were supposed to give him a contract and Tupac was on death row for about, I would say, 10 and a half, almost 11 months. And there was never a contract written up. So now when Tupac dies, right, when he gets killed and um, his mother, Afeni, uh, arrest her soul um, before they were trying to release the Machiavelli album and them trying to release the Machiavelli album, uh, Afeni actually put a cease and desist order basically saying that they couldn't release the album. And so who comes up and steps up to the table? Cause at this particular time, Suge is in jail for the thing that happened in Vegas. You know what I mean? For the violation. So he's in jail. Nobody from death row stepped up to go and um, uh, remedy the situation as far as, uh, you know, Tupac being signed to death row because there was no contract. What could you do? There was no accounting. There was none of those things that normally would be in a contract where Tupac and his rights would be represented. So now who steps up? Who steps up? I'm asking you, do you know? No, I don't. Man. Okay. Jimmy Iovine. So Jimmy Iovine steps up, right? Because basically who is death, death row distributed by? Interscope. Who's the parent company of Interscope? Warner Brothers. Right. And, and contrary to most people's uh, uh, or, or should I say the prevailing notion that was out there, uh, Suge Knight never bailed uh, Tupac out of jail. Suge Knight didn't bail to Tupac out of jail. Let it be known. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, is the bail situation in itself had three components. Right. First off, not Warner Brothers, but Atlantic Records actually put up 
an $850,000 corporate guarantee that if anything went wrong, Tupac didn't show up for court, that they would be on the hook for that. Number two, uh, Interscope put up $250,000, right? And number three, the bail bondsman company uh, that bailed Tupac out, they put up a bail bonds of $300,000. And basically all of that went against Tupac's future royalties. Now, once again, I just told you that Tupac wasn't under death row. So why would Interscope and Atlantic Records put up almost a uh, million dollars to get Tupac out of jail? Because Tupac was signed to Interscope. And basically what they were doing was they were getting Tupac out of jail, but they couldn't do it because, number one, of the corporate structure. If you remember C. Dolores Tucker, she had bought some shares of Warner Brothers, went to the Warner Brothers meeting, basically was hollering about how Tupac and Death Row and, you know, they, they calling women, you know, all of these names and disrespecting black women in the community and the whole nine yards. That's where that stemmed from. But see, most people don't understand that. So once again, Tupac wasn't signed to Death Row and Suge Knight didn't pay his bail. They used Suge Knight because Suge Knight being the front guy and the CEO of Death Row, Got to give him credit for having the idea, along with Tupac's then wife at that time, who Tupac told his wife to put the bug in Suge's ear because he was trying to get out of jail, being in that situation. Um, you got to give him credit for thinking of that idea. But like I said, no, Suge didn't pay for the bail. And, and these are facts. Like I said, once again, if you, people do their due diligence, they, they would know that. So now you go to, why, well, why wouldn't Warner Brothers, uh, I mean, why wouldn't uh, uh, Interscope bail them out because number one, they had just got in trouble with Warner Brothers because of C. Dolores Tucker. And remember, Interscope bought back their half that they sold to Warner Brothers for $150 million. Warner Brothers had bought half, but when they started complaining, Warner Brothers sold the other half back to uh, uh, Interscope. Furthermore, um, uh, Warner Brothers had gave uh, Death Row, a publishing deal for $4 million. So even though that Warner Brothers didn't distribute Death Row records anymore, they still had a publishing deal. If you look on the back of All Eyes On Me, as well as any record that Death Row had put out that time, you'll see Warner Tamberling Publishing. So they were still making money off of the deal based on the publishing side of things, uh, but they weren't distributing the records no more. And the fact of the matter is, that they wouldn't even uh, bring out uh, dog food uh, from, from uh, uh, Daz and Corrupt, from the Dog Pound. Priority released that record. So once again, like I said, you know, um, and then you had Tupac Mom, um, when, when she filed the cease and desist order, Jimmy Iovine stepped up and, and he paid her $3 million. But check this out. Afeni was so smart, what she did was, she said, well, you give me $3 million, and now what comes to light is, oh, but we still had Tupac signed to our Interscope agreement. But Afeni was like, well, no, that's not what my son signed when he got out of prison. You know what I mean? My son signed a deal, said that he's supposed to get an 18% royalty rate. They were still trying to go by the 12% royalty rate that Tupac was under when he was under his Interscope agreement. Afeni was like, no, we're not going for that. That's not what he signed. So they were questioning the whole a deal memo in which it was and any lawyer or person who's legally uh, uh, proficient in their right mind would know that. And basically they agreed to that and they gave her what she wanted. And she got a few other things that she wanted and that's why they were able to release the Machiavelli album. Facts. So Tupac was never signed to Death Row. He was actually still signed to Interscope in Suge Knight really didn't put up the money to bail Tupac out of prison. It was in the scope. Absolutely. Yeah, but like I said, once again, it was Suge's idea. He, he gets the credit for that. You know what I mean? It was, and then, like I said, it was a brilliant idea, but once again, public relation wise, corporate wise, you couldn't have, and, and from the C. Dolores Tucker perspective, you couldn't have a multinational corporation bailing out Tupac Shakur for the charges that he was uh, alleged to have committed. But now, if we put Suge Knight 
and the reputation that Death Row is supposedly have these these guys, these whatever, whatever. It, it would be more fitting for it. It would be know? more fitting, like oh, and, and and like I said, it worked for public relations, and it worked for record sales, as we've seen. You know, all eyes on me went to the moon. So, like I said, you know, no Tupac wasn't legally signed to Death Row. You know, what I mean, he was still signed to Interscope, and and which, like I said, when you think about it, in in hindsight, it was a brilliant move. It was a brilliant business move. Like I said once again, but um. Like I said, and, and they never, um, they, and like the fact of the matter is they never got around to actually giving Tupac a contract. You know what I mean? Because they couldn't. You couldn't give him a contract because once again, the Interscope contract was never null and was never voided out. So, you know, that's like you trying to sign me and I'm already signed to this company. I might not tell you or you might not act like you know, but at the end of the day, that company going to come to me and be like, hold on, we got a contract. Furthermore, um, we've seen people get bought out of contracts like Snoop when Snoop went to No Limit. Um, no Limit actually bought Snoop's contract from Death Row. And as Reggie Wright had told you, right? So basically, which, which, what confirms what I'm saying, so what did Death Row give to Interscope for Tupac to be signed to Death Row? Nothing exchange hands. As we've seen with the deal member, there was nothing that exchange hands. So that just basically let you know that, you know, once again, a lot of the corporate stuff and the business stuff that goes on in the music business, but no, Tupac wasn't signed to Death Row. He was signed to Interscope. This is, this is one more thing, like I said, because the money was already coming through the channel of Interscope to Death Row. Like I said, uh, Interscope distributed Death Row. So the money was already coming through the, the, the same channel. Interscope and Warner Brothers seen money before Death Row did. And like I said, they gave Death Row a publishing contract, the, the publishing side of Warner Brothers, $4 million publishing contract. So, um, yeah, nah, it, it wasn't. And like I said, you know, the crazy part is that um, Tupac um, tried to, to remedy that situation. He, you know, he was on it, you know what I mean? He, he was on it. And I think when, when Dr. Dre left Death Row, Death Row, that's what really put Tupac, that really woke him up because Dre really left with nothing. It was like, hold on, like, what's really going on? And, you know. And then you have all of the other stuff that, that went into that. So.